Over the weekend, a whole bunch of people worked themselves into a tizzy over Rashida Tlaib daring to boo former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Here's the video. When someone by the name of Hillary Clinton said that nobody, we're not gonna boo, we're not gonna boo, we're classy here. No, we're no classy. I'll boo. Boo. <laughs> I, you all know I can't be quiet. No, we're gonna boo. That's all right. The haters, the haters will shut up on Monday when we win. There we go. She might be right, but we're not quite at the win yet, and the haters have not yet shut up. Uh, joining us to talk about the haters, Michael Brooks, welcome back to the show. <laughs> they will never shut up. No. So um, she booed Hillary Clinton. I get it. It's not polite or whatever. Um, but yeah, the reaction was pretty strong. What do you think about the representative uh, booing Hillary Clinton? I think she should have apologized. I think, you know, there, there's actually something here that's substantive. There is an incredibly dysfunctional, dangerous, and corrosive, uh, you know, policing um, that is, you know, and, and I've talked about this in the Exiting the Vampire Castle essay, which is a kind of broader problem on the left uh, that needs to have a, a much more kind of forgiving and resilient culture generally. But then, even more specifically, it's just so unbelievably misused in. Um, Basically, from kind of conservative members of the Democratic Party, I mean, that want a free license to, you know, bully, to lie, to distort, to uh, to everything you could imagine. And then, when there's even the most kind of minimal pushback, then we reach for the smelling salts. I mean, this is the context of you know Hillary Clinton absolutely trashing Bernie Sanders, and then just giving a little boo in response. I, I mean, it's it's funny because in some ways it's unimportant, and maybe even there was a time where I could say I could see the perspective of don't even get distracted by it. But it it actually is a signal, and it's sort of part and parcel with the more formal stuff. Like we're going to have a rules committee that's stacked against one candidate. Like we're going to, you know, all of a sudden consider changing debate rules to accommodate one oligarch that funds us. I, I think there actually does need to be a certain type of pushback, and frankly, it's synchronized with the argument of what a Sanders administration would be, yeah. which is that we're not looking for stupid, destructive and unhealthy fights at all. But if we need to have them, we'll have them because people need to have health care. People need to have homes. People need to live well. And we can't just keep letting this parasitic elite, uh, you know, deprive people of that. And obviously, you know, I mean, there's a lot of disgust this week for me looking at the precision of how relatively incompetent the Democrats are going up against Trump and how willing they are to just be ruthless to kind of try to put down uh, the, the energy coming from Bernie Sanders. I don't think she should have apologized and I'd like to add yeah. uh, boo. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, look, I, I, I largely agree with you there. Um, she did though, I wanna read her statement. She says that she had allowed her feelings about Ms. Clinton's remarks to get the best of me. I think that that, Statement is literally true. It brought out the best in her, actually. But anyway, she tweeted, however, I know what is at stake if we don't unify over one candidate to beat Trump, and I intend to do everything possible to ensure that Trump does not win in 2020. In this instance, I allowed my disappointment with Secretary Clinton's latest comments about Senator Sanders and his supporters get the best of me. You all, my sisters in service on stage and our movement deserve better. So look, we I think that we are unified in thinking that she didn't need to do all that. Especially, it's not like she brought up Hillary after Hillary's been out of the news for three months. Hillary has been going on every podcast she can to attack Bernie Sanders over the past few weeks. But I wanted to read I wanted to read this for you. This is from Nick Merrill, Hillary's spokesperson. I can't imagine this kind of behavior is something Iowans want to see from candidates and their surrogates. And I don't imagine the vast majority of voters in Representative Tlaib's district, which Secretary Clinton won by over 60 points in 2016, want to see this either. Mm. So that mm. a fairly clear threat against Rashida Tlaib in the name of unity. Well, right, and also I would want to know. I believe that's a general election number. I'd want to know what the primary looks like in her district. Uh, the other thing is that most people in Iowa and everywhere else don't care. This is the type of thing that 
maybe once in a million can get blown up into a cultural moment, but this is mostly stuff for people who obsess about this stuff all day. People have jobs and lives and things that are important and they don't, and if they want to get mixed up in kind of relatively trivial drama like this, I think they prefer to like read people magazine or follow sports, right? Like it's, you know, the, the melodrama is ridiculous, but I do think the substantive point here is, is, and there's, there's almost no one like this. Uh, I can't even think of an example, but if somebody said, look, I just want to be Donald Trump. I'm not ideologically attached. And so I have nothing but positive things to say about Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Mike Bloomberg, Elizabeth Warren, uh, you know, Cory Booker and whoever else has run and is running. I would disagree with that because I do think we need to deal with Trump and the origins of Trumpism. But I can totally respect that viewpoint. The problem is, is that people in other camps, including the Warren camp, including you know certainly people around the Clintons, use this rhetoric of unity to always uh, subtly or overtly undermine Sanders. So it's totally disingenuous. Yeah. If you're yeah. talking about unity, then I don't want to hear you criticizing anybody. I want you to say, boy, gee, you know, gee golly, <laughs> Joe Biden's got experience, and Warren's got those great blog posts, posts, and you know, Bernie Sanders has the energy, or whatever other, you know, sort of generic positive comments you want to make. But we are drawing distinctions, and there's big distinctions here, and that's what a primary process is. And I really resent the passive aggressive and disingenuous way it's used to target one campaign. I agree. And everyone, um, please take a minute if you haven't already. My latest article for uh, The Hill uh, was the establishment scam of unity. So definitely take a look at that. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.